Sony has quietly rolled out a new version of its popular FX3 cinema camera, now branded as the Sony Fuxia. At first glance, the Fuxia looks nearly identical to its predecessor. In fact, unless you're paying attention to the details, you might assume nothing has changed at all. However, for those who value the nuances, especially in professional workflows where small things can make a big difference, these changes are worth taking a closer look at. The Fuxia isn't a full-blown successor to the original FX3. It's not an FX4 or an evolutionary leap in performance. Instead, it's a subtle refresh, driven largely by supply chain constraints rather than a push for innovation. The origin of this refresh is fairly straightforward, Sony's original supplier discontinued the LCD panel used in the FX3. Rather than halting production or completely redesigning the camera, Sony opted for a practical solution, swap out the old display for a new one and make minor adjustments to accommodate the change. That led to the birth of the Fuxia, a camera that's fundamentally the same as the FX3 in terms of video quality, ergonomics, and internal architecture, but now equipped with a higher resolution screen and missing a few formerly standard features. So, what exactly has changed? The most notable upgrade in the Fuxia is its new 3-inch LCD screen, which now boasts a resolution of 2.35 million dots, replacing the older 1.44 million dot panel found on the original FX3. This improvement may seem small on paper, but in real-world use, especially in bright outdoor environments or critical focus checks, it's a tangible upgrade. The new screen appears crisper, a bit brighter, and provides better detail when framing shots or navigating menus. It's not a revolutionary enhancement, but for professional videographers and filmmakers who often monitor directly off the camera, the sharper display can improve day-to-day -day usability. However, this improvement comes with a couple of compromises. In updating the display and revising the hardware, Sony also removed two features, NFC and infrared remote control support. These aren't major losses for everyone, but for certain users, they may prove frustrating. Let's start with NFC. This feature was never the star of the show, but it did provide a convenient way to quickly pair your FX3 with a compatible smartphone or tablet. With a simple tap, users could establish a wireless connection for remote control or file transfer via Sony's mobile apps. Now, without NFC, users will need to rely on Bluetooth or Wi-Fi for those same tasks. While those methods still work, they tend to be slower and less seamless than NFC pairing, especially when working under time pressure or in fast-paced environments. The removal of infrared remote functionality is another subtle yet impactful change. The original FX3 supported basic IR remote triggers, which were popular among solo operators and small production teams. These remotes allowed users to start and stop recording, or snap a still image, from a distance without any cables or complex wireless systems. In the FSIA, this IR receiver is gone. That leaves users with Bluetooth remotes or wired trigger solutions as alternatives, both of which work, but require more setup or specific accessories. Aside from these changes, the rest of the FSIA is virtually identical to the original FX3. There's no change in sensor technology, processing power, image quality, or even physical layout. The FSIA retains the same 12.1 megapixel full frame XMR or CMOS sensor, powered by Sony's Bion's XR image processor. This pairing continues to deliver superb video performance, including 4K recording at up to 120 frames per second, 10 bit 4 to 2 colon 2 internal capture, and 16 bit RAW output via HDMI. These are the same cinema-grade features that made the FX3 a go-to choice for independent filmmakers, content creators, and even documentary professionals. In terms of dynamic range, the FSIA still offers more than 15 stops, making it well-suited for high-contrast shooting scenarios. Its ISO performance is also untouched, with an impressive expanded range up to ISO 409600, which ensures exceptional low-light flexibility. Whether you're shooting in a dimly lit studio or capturing night scenes on location, the FSIA handles noise exceptionally well. The camera body, controls, battery life, audio inputs, and menu system all remain the same as well. From a usability standpoint, shooting with an FX3 or FSIA will feel exactly the same. This leads to the inevitable question, why remove features instead of adding new ones? The answer seems rooted in practicality. Sony didn't plan this update as a next-gen upgrade, Rather, it was a response to a supply chain issue, the original LCD panel was no longer available. Sony could have taken the opportunity to add new features or improve other areas, but instead chose to keep the update limited in scope. That decision likely helped minimize production delays and avoid a price increase. 
Simplifying the internal hardware by eliminating NFC and IR components may have helped with cost control and manufacturing efficiency, but consumers won't see those savings. Interestingly, the FSIA is priced the same as the original FX3 at launch, around $3,898, despite offering slightly fewer features. From a buyer's perspective, this creates a somewhat awkward situation. If you already own the original FX3, there's no compelling reason to upgrade to the FSIA. The new screen is nicer, but not transformative. And losing NFC and IR support might actually feel like a downgrade, depending on your workflow. Unless your FX3 is damaged or you find yourself specifically needing a crisper display for field use, the FSIA doesn't justify the cost of replacing your existing gear. However, if you're in the market for a new FX3, things are a bit more complicated. Since Sony has stopped producing the original FX3 due to the discontinued screen, retailers are now selling through remaining stock. Once it's gone, the FSIA will become the standard model available. So, for those who value NFC pairing or use IR remotes in their workflow, now is the time to grab an original FX3 before they disappear from shelves. Some retailers might offer slight discounts on the original model, but in many cases, both versions are still listed at the same price. On the other hand, if you're not relying on those discontinued features, the FSIA does offer some future-proofing benefits. Being the newer model, it's the one Sony is most likely to support with firmware updates and new accessories going forward. From a long-term investment perspective, the FSIA is the camera Sony plans to maintain in its lineup, so buying it may ensure better compatibility with future tools, software, and updates. In the end, it's important to recognize that the FSIA is not meant to be an upgrade or a replacement in the traditional sense. It's more of a supply-driven revision, a necessary tweak to keep a successful camera model in production despite changes in part availability. While it does introduce a slight visual improvement with the new screen, it also walks back on a couple of features that some users may miss. For most people, the decision between the FX3 and FSIA boils down to a question of priorities. Do you prefer a sharper screen and ongoing firmware support, or would you rather keep NFC and infrared remote compatibility as part of your workflow? Ultimately, the FSIA is a great camera, but so was the FX3. They're essentially the same tool, just fine-tuned in slightly different ways. If you're shopping for a new cinema camera in Sony's ecosystem, the FSIA will serve you just as well as the FX3 ever did, so long as you're aware of what's been added, and what's been taken away.